yeah, it shut out from the laptop to the TV. Yeah. Yeah. So then you're right. Is... The... Yeah, it's nice, but I would have had to set the camera a little bit higher, I guess. I don't know. I'm sitting right beside the stove. There's 88 degrees and climbing here, so. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we see start stripping us, starting to strip down. Is yeah. anybody on <laughs> Karma yet? Can you mute Karma so we can go a little bit faster? That that the end. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're not on. Them? No, we're not on Facebook yet, but we are recording. <laughs> okay. Delete I just that resent it a part. second time. Yeah, maybe you should mute me again there, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't help yourself, eh? <laughs> Take the control out of my hands there. I'll be okay with that. <laughs> hmm. Do I have a minute to get a bottle of water? Is that okay? Yeah. We just got a text that said Donald McPhee passed away. Yeah. No way. Yes. Yeah. Like a what's that? Ten days after she died? Not long. Wait. It was between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Because yeah. I wrote to Allison last night and I said, "Oh man, I can't find Mary Beth on Facebook. You got to tell her how sorry I am because as an only child." Must be devastating lose both your parents that quickly. And he wow. he didn't feel good and then boom, he was gone. Like oh, that's not a not a warning at all. Wow. That's a loss. Yeah. Okay. Um I guess sorry about sorry about that, folks. No problem. You're live, Jamie. Okay, we're live. Okay, so uh we will continue our meeting. We've uh, just come out of uh out of um, closed session, so we will continue the meeting. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? And we do have one, Councillor Madden. Uh, Michael Madden declares a pecuniary interest with item 6C3 bylaw 05 2022 on the 24th of January, 2022. He is the owner of a service providing entity. So uh, Councillor Madden will just shut his camera off when we uh, get to that. Uh, that point. So um, I have a motion moved by Councillor Massey, seconded by Councillor Noble, that the minutes of the following meetings be adopted as circulated. Regular meeting of Council, January 10th, 2022. Special meeting of Council, budget, January 13th, 2022. And special meeting of Council, budget, January 19th, 2022. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. And we will move on to staff reports, administrative department, uh, strategic plan update. Uh, is there a motion for that? Yes, there is. Eh? Sarah, is that I'm just looking at that the committee, the whole receives report AD 2022-01 for information purposes only. This is not the Committee of the Whole, so is there, a, do you have a motion for this? Um, that would probably be a motion, Jamie. You just need to change it to council. Okay. I have a motion moved by Councillor Noble, seconded by Councillor Madden, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry receives report AD 2021-01 for information purposes only. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I just wanted to provide council with just a brief update on the strategic plan. Um, as you're all aware, this is the, the election year. So um, there's only about uh, nine more months of your term. Um, I was uh, very pleased to report as I went through this that we, you know, despite uh, COVID-19, we, we have moved forward in, on quite a few of the initiatives on here. Uh, many are on hold uh, for different reasons, um, but uh, we, you know, staff has been working diligently and will be working to complete um, some of the items towards the end of the year. So, for instance, you will be getting a report next month on uh, the rare. Uh, Tim and I were discussing it uh, just last week following the budget. 
Um, so we're looking at bringing a report in February on that. Um, I also know that um, the county is On funding and research facilities, I'm doing some plans on uh, changing some you know, programming, and we're pleased to uh, report that on Monday we'll be reopening the dome and the arena. Um, so, you know, certainly I think we had some great plans, and I know the program coordinator was working on some programming that sort of got halted because we had to close down because of the pandemic. But we're hopeful that, you know, as we move into uh, the last part of this year, that we should be able to get some of that program running. Um, and you know some of the initiatives on here are things that will continue even outside of the strategic plan. So the customer service and some of the other things that we're working on, you know, staff will, will continue to do so. Um, the development charges, uh, feasibility study is on hold for now. Um, the county is doing a growth study, um, and we're communicating with them. Uh, the consultant that was hired to do that um, is also the consultant that's hired to do our DC study. So where the information that the county will be getting for the growth study will be used for the DC study on our side. So we put uh, that on hold for now. It's actually a good news story because um, some of the preliminary numbers we've seen through growth um, are not very good for North Glengarry. So we're hoping that, you know, talking to the county and pointing out some of the development that's possible within you know, Alexandria and Maxville, as well as some of the rural areas um, through the marketing and development strategy that we can have a good uh, growth strategy for North Glengarry that then can be used for the DC study. So um, certainly I can take any questions if council has them, but um, you know, I'm certainly pleased with some of the things that have been accomplished for this council over the term so far. That's great, uh, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, uh, agreed, Sarah. I think that there's been a, a great deal of good work been done in the last, uh, in the last three years, um, a lot of accomplishments with regards to those just goes to show what a, a good strategic plan can do. If it's well set up, you can actually make a good progress. So, um, you know, compliments to staff for all of your hard work on all of those items. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, I know that there was a working group that had been established. I imagine it went dormant with regards to the Alexandria Main Street project. Um, we haven't met the work. I was on the working group uh, at one point. Um, it hasn't met in some time. I'm mm -hmm. just wondering if if you could uh, maybe talk to Ben DeHaan and see if there's some value in um, re initiating that working group so that we can uh, kind of find out what's going on both locally and at the counties and, and get this moving. Um, that would be great if you could do that. And then just one other thing with regards to the um, hookups for the water project in Maxville. Um, I was a little surprised to see that there were still 49 un uh, unconnected homes. Um, and uh, I, I'm just wondering, um, do you does anyone have any insight on that as to that's a higher number than I had expected? I know that they're gonna be built from now now on in, and they've had plenty of opportunity to hook up. Um, I'm just wondering if anyone has any insight on that. Um, so through you, Mr. Mayor, so certainly Karma um, or Deputy Mayor Williams, we, we met as a group. So myself and the uh, CBO, Director of Public Works, as well as some Waterworks uh, staff sat down and we went through the list. Um, a lot of the people are, are sort of um, just not interested in connecting, unfortunately. Some were having some difficulties getting some plumbers in, but we've been told that that's not the case anymore. Um, they each, we do have detailed notes on each, um, and we will continue to, you know, encourage them to connect. Um, however, we did have to make the decision, as was mentioned, to start billing them. We think that once that starts, that will encourage the connection at that point, because it doesn't make much sense that you'd be paying for something that you're not receiving. Um, and, you know, it's, it's sort of all over the, the village, unfortunately, that people haven't connected yet. But we will be keeping an eye on that. It's something I've been, I've been getting updates um, as we move forward. And I know um, the CBO did 
personally deliver letters to everyone in the summer of uh, 221. So everyone's been personally spoken to. And as well, um, I know the public works specialist does keep you know, communication open as well. So we'll be providing another update to council on that in the next couple of months to see where we get. And uh, you know, we have given extra time for COVID. We gave an extra 12 months. So you know, we've been very you know, interested to hear the reasons why. And some of them are just being a bit stubborn. So. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Okay, moving on to the Treasury Department 2022 operating and capital budgets. I have a motion moved by Councillor Madden, seconded by Councillor Manley, that the Township, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry receive staff report TR 2022-03 regarding the 2022 operating and capital budgets. And that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry adopts the 2022 operating and capital budgets as amended at the January 13th and January 19th, 2022 budget meetings with a net municipal tax levy requirement of $6,326,186 as noted in the attached document. Welcome, Kim. Council, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Uh, at the two special meetings of council, there was uh, a lot of discussion uh, about various line items. Um, on the report you have before you there, are the items noted. Uh, I'm not gonna read them line by line. Uh, however, there was some studies and further discussion required for um, bringing fleet forward in March with reserves and debt limits, plus uh, updating all the ages of all the equipment providing a five-year list of administrative costs and, and neighboring communities as well. Uh, the rare report council, which uh, the CAO had mentioned previously. Um, then the uh, public works director to provide a report to council regarding roads requirements in the spring. Uh, there was a report uh, as well for a 10-year plan for the water treatment uh, area. Uh, as well, in this budget, there was a 2% increase for water and wastewater, uh, which does not affect the tax base at all, as it's a self-supported entity. Uh, at the end of the day, Council has suggested leaving the proposed 1.77% uh, tax rate increase, which reflects in that $6.3 million tax levy. The attached budget document uh, is, reflects the changes that Council requested at those meetings. and. Um, and that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Kim. Any questions on the budget? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion. The motion is carried. Thank you, Thank Kim. Thank you very much. Thank you to all uh, the staff and directors for uh, getting this done. And uh, I think we have a good budget. We, uh, we kept the tax rate down as, as much as we could, uh, definitely below the cost of living. So uh, uh, good kudos to everybody. Thank you. Thank you to uh, members of council for uh, all they've done through this. At, uh, good job. Everybody was well prepared. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to planning, uh, building and bylaw enforcement. I have a motion moved by Councillor Manley, seconded by Councillor Wensing, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry adopts zoning bylaw Z-15-2021 and that bylaw number Z-15-2021 be read a first, second and third time and adopt it in open council on January 24, 2022. Welcome Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this uh, zoning bylaw amendment was uh, presented to the planning committee on December 13th. Uh, the owner is Monsieur Michel Lantin at 21681 Glen Robertson Road. Uh, Monsieur Lantin wants to build a secondary home, like a second house on the same property. So if you remember, that's the, it's a big, big property uh, separated with the tracks. Southern portion is rural, north is ag. And he wants to build another house for himself uh, beside a pond that, uh, that's existing on the property. So uh, we did not receive any comments from uh, any members of, uh, of the public regarding this file. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Perfect, thank you. Any questions or comments from members of council? Council Madden. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. One quick question, Jacob. In the report, it said this application's for the entire property, the 193.21. 
on the schedule a that's attached to the bylaw it's just the ag portion that's yeah, been affected it, it's the it's the entire ag portion but okay. yeah it, the, it's it's a little bit complicated with this one because of the track so if the intention of Monsieur Longtemps was to separate the rural from the ag, it, it would complicate things a lot. But luckily, but maybe we should have, should have worded that differently. It's it's the ag that's being rezoned to AG uh, 197, where the house is going to be. So the rural cannot be detached from the other part because he would need some right away on that rural lands there. So it would it would create a bit like more complicated set. So that's why we worded it like that, just to ensure that the entire property cannot be rezoned or cannot be severed unless we do some other zoning amendments and other planning applications. Okay, so just to clarify, once we've done this, so he can't sever off one of those rural pieces south of the tracks and leave, so there's there's essentially two pieces there, right? One on each side of the driveway. So he can't, exactly. he, he would couldn't not. sever off, say the east one and leave the west so that he's got his frontage? Well, he could, but he would have to go through another zoning bylaw amendment. And at that point, I think the counties would not accept that because it would be the second one from, from a, pro a property. So I, I, I don't think, for now, the answer is no, but he would have, I guess, yes, if you go through some other planning applications. So okay, what? good enough. I just wanted to make yeah. sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, moving on to um, to number two. I have a motion moved by Councillor Wensing, seconded by Deputy Mayor Williams, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry receives staff report number BP 2022-03, and that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry appoints a Deputy Chief Building Official for the enforcement of the Ontario Building Code Act within the municipal jurisdiction of the Township of North Glengarry and that bylaw 03-2022 be read at first, second and third time and adopted in open council on January 24th, 2022. Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so this this bylaw, just to, to, to make sure everybody's clear, we're not hiring another deputy <laughs> chief building official. It's just a, it's just a clerical bylaw really. What What's it for? Uh, so as you all know, we've hired Michelle and uh, so I, I, I don't know, I did not pass this bylaw right away. Just wanted to make sure, I guess, everything worked well. Uh, everything is going really well with Michel. He works well with everybody. So this bylaw is just really to, to actually give him the, give him the, the, the powers of being a, a chief building official in case I have to leave or whatnot. And uh, as you can see in the bylaw, uh, he's also appointed as like a property standards officer. So he's allowed to do orders on his own. Uh, he's appointed as a, a fire provincial officer. So if there's any uh, dangers to life and to, so this is really just paperwork. We always work all together, but uh, this is just to formalize his, uh, his title and role as a deputy chief building official. Really. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Jacob, I think you might've got this past uh, deputy mayor Williams. You know, we could have got an, you could have got another one, but uh... <laughs> any questions or comments? Okay. Well, geez, was she mad? She just left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Karma. Come back. <laughs> okay. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Doesn't look happy. Are you back, Deputy Mayor? Yeah, Kim, sorry. I keep getting tossed out. Sorry about that. No worries, we just hired seven more people while you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on to 6C3, and I'll ask uh, Councillor Patton to turn off his, phone, uh, his uh, camera. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Williams, seconded by Councillor Massey, that staff report 202202 regarding septic inspections be received, and that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry into, enter into a two-year contract January 2022 to December 2023 with Lakeside Green Environmental Consulting to provide plan review and inspection services for part eight on site sewage system of the Ontario Building Code and that bylaw 05 2022 be read a first, 
second and third time and adopt it in open council on January 24th, 2022. Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so as you know, uh, North and South Glengarry are the only two townships in SDG and in Prescott Russell that are not using uh, South Nation River Conservation for uh, septic permits. Um, so this report, uh, I guess time goes fast. This is a very similar report that the one that was presented four years ago when we renewed uh, the contract for Lakeside Green Environmental. So it's pretty much the same service. So what Lakeside does, um, someone comes at the office, they apply for their septic permit. So we take all the information, we email it to him. Uh, he does the revision, he does the, the actual permit. Uh, I'm the chief building official, so I'm responsible at the end of the day for the septic system. So I sign the permit and the permit is issued to the landowner. Uh, the inspections are done after that by Lakeside. Um, I have uh, really zero complaints regarding that service. It's going really well, really smooth process. Uh, and I, I know the chief building official down South Gary very well. And he says the same thing. So uh, nothing against South Nation. I'm sure their service is good too. But uh, at this point, this is, uh, this is working very well for us. Uh, local, uh, a little bit cheaper than South Nation, similar prices to all other townships. So uh, it's really good for both taxpayers and for, uh, for the municipality. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, it's this, this time is a two-year contract. As you will see in the fees, uh, they were increased a little bit. So there's uh, some insurances that were bumped up a lot from Lakeside. So this pretty much covers for the insurance. But I just want to note here that uh, these fees are all being recouped by the, the, the landowner. So when we issue the permit, he pays for the permit, which pays for all the services. So the township is not, uh, we're not losing money with septic. We're actually making a little bit, not a whole lot, but it pretty much evens up at the end of the day. And uh, so that's why we're still able to provide that service for uh, a little bit cheaper than, uh, than what we could, but it's, it's going well. So yeah, I think that's, that covers it pretty much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councilor Manley. Yes, just so, so Jacob, those those uh, um, the fees that are listed in the uh, the document, um, the new fees that are listed for for this coming up year, um, are those are those as well lower than South um, South Star yes. South uh, Nation? Yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah, uh, they will. I think the user fee bylaw will come in in a couple of meetings. Uh, we've adjusted our fee for the septic based on these costs and. I also check with South Nation and we're, we're a little bit under. We're, we're so for some things like for, uh, I think for reviews or something, we're very much even, but for the actual septic service, septic system, which is the one we get the more, we're I think 50 bucks cheaper or something like that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, there are none opposed. Okay, we will move on to uh, number four. Councillor Madden, I believe will be coming back. I have a motion moved by Councillor Massey, seconded by Councillor Manley, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry receive staff report number BP 2022-04 for the formal request that Rogers Communication Inc's proposal be considered complete and that the Township of North Glengarry approves the assessment of the process Rogers has undertaken to date for the construction of two wireless towers in North Glengarry to improve wireless voice and data services within the township and the township issue a formal letter of concurrence to Rogers with a copy to ISED in order to permit Rogers to move forward with the installation of the proposed wireless communication sites. Jacob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I guess you're uh, getting used to these reports here. We've got a lot in the last few years. Uh, of course, it's, it's normal now with everybody working from home, especially for the last two years that people are looking for good internet service and voice and uh, uh, calls and stuff like that. So these two towers are for Rogers Communications. Um, as you see attached to the report, uh, I did attach the site selection and justification report. So. This is the evaluation they do. Um, this is all federal. Uh, it's the evaluation they do to figure out where the towers should be, 
and uh, like what property should they use? Is it better on, on an existing entrance? Is it going to alter uh, watershed? Is it going to alter some neighbors, uh, like for, for uh, visual uh, pollution and whatnot? So they do all this report. Uh, they submit it to us. We have a quick look, and then we, we basically read it, and we say we have no objection at this point, and we request that they that they provide us when they're all done with their research with what's called a consultation summary and concurrence letter request. So what that is basically is, um, so again, it's all federal. So what they do is they just ask for a concurrence letter to say that we're aware that this is happening. Uh, we, we cannot issue a permit because it's federal. I try every time, but they know their stuff well. They, they will not pay for a building permit in the township. Uh, so again, Rogers know how we work. Since I've worked there, I think it's the fourth or fifth tower that they put up. Uh, these two towers, uh, one of them, the first one, 91.5 meter high. Uh, it's a guided tower. So it's got these, these wires from the top and then coming down. Uh, the first one is located on Angel Road in Apple Hill, 3744. Um, so it would cover like the, I guess, the southwest of the township. And the other one, northeast corner, it's uh, pretty, it's on Old Military Road, uh, pretty much at the corner of Blind Road intersection. So you've got the two towers, uh, the two, two are being built on farmlands, no close neighbors. Uh, they did all their research, both of them, they received zero comments from uh, from anyone. They have to advertise in the newspaper and to all local neighbors. Uh, both of them are gonna use existing entrances. The only thing that you'll see going up is the tower and a little mechanical cabinet at the bottom. So um, yeah, besides that, I think uh, there's no issue. So what I will do if uh, council uh, wants to do the, the letter, uh, they're, they're gonna be able to proceed with the construction, I guess, in the in the spring. I didn't ask when, but I assume it's going to be in the spring. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Questions or comments? Councillor Massey? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Jacob. Uh, Long-awaited news for uh, for everybody, I guess, with, uh, like you say, uh, with the COVID, uh, the reception, uh, just look at Karma here, like uh, I know here in Fassifern also, we have basically no reception some days, so good news. Uh, what I would, like, what I would have liked to uh, maybe what uh, like I'm I, I'm uh, sorry that the, the federal didn't come up with a plan that uh, all these companies that the communication companies not uh, uh, invest all in the, like instead of having all their different towers on themselves they should have ganged up and used you know the just like the Bell Line did you know instead of popping up towers here and there they should have just combined their uh, their monies and build a few towers for everybody to use. Anyways, just a comment that maybe the, I know it's not our, uh, not our to say, but uh, uh, in the future, you know, it'd be probably better for uh, uh, for everybody if you know, they would share the towers instead of having their own towers. Anyway, but anyways, it's good news. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Massey. Uh, Councillor Manley. Yeah, just just to follow up on on something before Jacob too. So about a year ago, we had we had two of these as well from Rogers, uh, one for Greenfield, and one for um, I think it was Glenn Robertson. Yeah, there was one in Maxville as well. Okay, Maxville, right? Yes. Yeah. Do we know where the status of those are? Because it, it seems to be taking a long time. Yeah, it is. I I can uh, I can send emails to see what's uh, what's going on, but uh, they don't like once once we issue the letter. Uh, I'm I'm pretty much out of the picture, so I'm right, just right. Uh, yeah. I I, I just, we send the letter and then they're allowed to do the tower when it starts, uh, what happens or whatever. I I have zero clue. I don't get notices. I don't get nothing. So I can send emails to to get uh, to to know what's what's happening though. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if you could, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Noble. Just uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to follow up, then uh, Jacob for. The town of uh, or the hamlet of Lahiel that's just been waiting for this. So don't pop the champagne yet. Like if they start in the spring, they might actually only start at the sometime later on in the year. So in that same letter, could you double check with these two towers too and just see if there's a, a timeline we could get out of them? No pressure. No, no, I can. Well, 
like I said, even if I put pressure, they'll just delete my email, but I can definitely <laughs> ask. Yeah. Does that actually work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Councilor Madden. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a, a quick point, uh, Councilor Massey, your point. When I was reading through, I believe there was mention in there about uh, companies sharing towers. Uh, and they're making the point that these towers are going in spaces where there's no coverage because of the tower surrounding, but they made mention that they're high enough and they're strong enough to support the infrastructure of other businesses should they wish to uh, to uh, piggyback on it, we'll call it. Not to say that the companies will, but apparently there is that ability. Okay. Yeah, because Bell and Telus share, the ones over by Van Kill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, good. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, none opposed. Okay, moving on to the Public Works Department. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, Thank you. Crosswalks on county roads. I have a motion moved by Councillor Manley, seconded by Councillor Madden, that report uh, PW 202202 crosswalks on county roads be received for information purposes only. And I'm assuming Tim, uh, Tim, perfect. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so uh, there's been some um, concerns brought up about, uh, um, or questions about how we get these crosswalks over um, county roads. And uh, I did some investigation and uh, provided there to you in the report what the, uh, the policy of the, uh, the counties is. So essentially, we have the power to make, sorry, the township has the power to um, make decisions on how pedestrians uh, get across uh, county roads. Um, however, the financial burden also lands squarely on the township as well. Um, I've also done some research into uh, what sort of crosswalks we should be using and uh, I've consulted with uh, Ben from, uh, from the counties and uh, Michelle and um, some layering research. And we've found that we want to lean away from the type D crossings, uh, which are um, suggestive crossings that uh, essentially um, the onus is on the pedestrian really um, to make sure that they're entering when the, when the crossing is safe, such as you would get on uh, very low speed residential streets. Um, so we want to recommend the type C crossings. Um, that that's similar to what we have in downtown Alexandria with a, a rapidly flashing light. Um, there's a few there's a few variations that you can get whether the the sign is over the top of the road or just on the side. On the side seems to be fine, but the important bit seems to be that you have the rapidly flashing um, signal uh, to make drivers stop so they really pay attention to it, um, especially for a, the higher speed. I mean it's. It, it isn't a huge speed, but um, there's evidence to show that the type D crossings uh, put in the wrong position can actually increase incidence of uh, pedestrian um, incidents. Uh, so essentially we, we recommend these type C crossings uh, based on the installation at Alexandria, taking out some of the, the fancier elements like the stamped concrete that isn't necessary. We can just paint lines. We will need tactile strips at each uh, crossing and depress curbs. Um, we can do it for about fifteen thousand dollars a crossing. Um, that's a that's a budget, not a hard number, but that's essentially materials. We do it all ourselves. Essentially, we get a, a hydro vac to to dig the hole. Um, that's not projected in the twenty twenty two budget. I would suggest that um, we actually have those traffic counters now as well. So we could get some um, more information on uh, what, what traffic, uh, not only the, uh, the vehicle, vehicular traffic, but we can get some information, even if it's anecdotal, on uh, the pedestrian traffic in those areas as well, and um, make sure that we can plan where the best place is for these crossings. Um, you'll see in the report, there's uh, one for Maxville Manor, which is suggested, and one that's suggested for, um, uh, the district high school in Alexandria. Um, the one in Maxville is 
more problematic because there's not a suitable sidewalk on both sides of the street. Um, so uh, uh, essentially that, that was this report just to bring the information to council that uh, the, the cost is on the township to put them in and uh, that we recommend if we do put them in, we put in a type C um, so that we, it's a, uh, an airtight solution for pedestrians. Okay, Councillor Massey, then Deputy Mayor Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thanks, Tim, for the report. Uh, good news there again, because uh, in the longest time, we were always been told that it was a county issue, and then now that uh, they put the... Uh, the uh, but a, a few months ago, before you came, uh, Tim, I think I requested that, that you look maybe, you know, uh, Plengary Sports Palace under the, the road going to the um, high school, uh, coming yep. off, uh, I think maybe, Jamie, you can help me. There's a street there. Mm -hmm. You know, the McDonald Boulevard and then there was, uh, I think it's Oak Street. No, you know, it, uh, yeah, I know it's street time, just a small uh, little sliver. Yeah, so it comes out and then the kids are often, when the GSP is open, often go from the high school to the arena. So there was a neighbor a few months ago uh, requested that we look at the uh, crossing there too, like uh, uh, because there's a lot of people going through on the other side. So just maybe if you can add that. Add that one to your list, uh, Tim, please. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Deputy Thank you. Mayor Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, Tim, thanks for your reports. Um, your reports have been very thorough and uh, it's, um, it's good. Well done. Uh, with regards to the Maxwell Manor, um, there's a significant redevelopment going to be happening there. Um, I'm sure Councillor Manley or um, Massey knows more about it than I do, uh, but there is the potential for a change in entrances um, on that property. And um, so I think certainly before moving forward, um, I would consult with the uh, CAO of the uh, Maxville Manor. Yep, good point. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, through you, Ms. Mayor. Uh, yes, yeah, Sarah, um... Sarah and I have uh, arranged to um, to meet and take that into consideration. Excellent. Okay, any further questions or comments? Councilor Madden. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two things, one that's called Ronald Street. Um, Tim, I just like to echo, echo the uh, Deputy Mayor's comments about your report. The uh, 153 some odd pages of the uh, book 15 of the Ontario Traffic Manual. <laughs> <laughs> maybe for some wicked good reading. <laughs> Haven't gotten through all of it yet, but someday maybe. <laughs> Are you saying you didn't read your package, uh, Councillor Madden? I read my package. I, I skipped some of the Ontario government stuff. <laughs> uh, very, very disappointing. New <laughs> councillors should be reading everything. <laughs> do we okay. want to do a show of hands on that one? <laughs> yeah. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried. Okay, moving on to municipal drain maintenance policy. I have a motion moved by Councillor Madden, seconded by Councillor Wensing, that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry adopts the municipal drain maintenance policy bylaw number 202204, and that bylaw 202204 be read a first, second, third time, and enacted in open council this 24th day of January, 2022. Tim. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Um, so this policy is what I had uh, spoken about in the budget meeting previously. And what it will allow us to do is essentially set a cutoff date for when we get requests to clear drains. Um, and what I'm trying to do is uh, make it so that we can set up all the work for the clearing season. So we don't clear drains in the summer because it, it interferes with the, the fields and the, the harvesting. And um, we, so we really only do it during that uh, late November to uh, March. Um, and what's happening at the moment and what I've seen is that we get these requests uh, very, very last minute and we, we rush out and we try and, and organize things. And I think it's frustrating both for the team at Public Works and also for the, the residents who get the bill and the farmers who are having their, their drains cleared. Um, so that, that in a nutshell is what this 
this bylaw is about and it shouldn't really change anything. We'll still do emergency um, clearances. If there is a request, we will still go out and assess the drain. Um, but it, it's essentially putting a plan in place that if we get a request and, and you miss the deadline, then you kind of have to wait wait till the next one if it's not an emergency. Um, uh, and that I think that's going to work a lot better for everyone. We're going to send out notices as of that date. These are the people who are going to get their drains cleared. And then these are the people who will be paying for it because it's on their land through the Drainage Act. Um, pretty much it. OK, perfect. That's, uh, that's good news. There's nothing like having a good policy just to uh, avoid issues down the road. Uh, Councillor Noble. And yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tim, I, I, I appreciate this. I know that everybody around me here is going to appreciate this. Um, and definitely the team themselves, because what's better than knowing what your plan is a few months in advance, especially when it's this kind of stuff. And that way a farmer can tell you if the, you know everything is off and oh, maybe then you can be the first one or it's one of those years where you can't get the crop off till Christmas. Well, okay, maybe we'll bump you in the third place. And then yeah, I'm sure I'm sure anybody that's going to pay the bill is going to appreciate having a couple of months notice as well, too. So um, thank you very much for all the work you're going to put into this and and for uh, everybody in public works for this. Perfect. Go ahead, Tim. Thank you. Uh, through you, Ms. Mayor, uh, I also must point out that uh, Zoe, um, the public work specialist, uh, she is um, She's been the person who's been running this and uh, she came to me with the idea. So full credit to, to Zoe for, for all this. And um, yeah. That's great. No, that's great. Thank you, Tim. Okay, no further comments. All those in favor of the motion? The motion is carried. Thank you, Tim, for your reports. Uh, notice of motion next uh, regular public meeting of council February 14th 2022 at 7 p.m. via zoom you're okay Jacques uh, it's Valentine's Day you won't be taking anybody out that night you're good <laughs> careful okay. I get him in trouble <laughs> <laughs> okay I have uh moving on to um confirming bylaw I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Williams seconded by Councillor Massey that the Council of the Township of North Glengarry receive bylaw 06-2022 and that Council adopt bylaw 06-2022 being a bylaw to adopt, confirm and ratify matters dealt with by resolution and that bylaw 06-2022 be read a first, second and third time and enacted in open council this 24th day of January, 2022. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried, none opposed. And uh, we are going into adjournment. So I have a motion moved by Councillor Massey, seconded by Councillor Noble. There being no further business to discuss, the meeting was adjourned at 7.50 p.m. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you to all members of council and thank you to staff as well as anybody watching uh, at home. Uh, hopefully you have a good week. This is the last week we hope that we will be in lockdown and uh, better times are ahead. So let's uh, stay positive out there and uh, smile a little bit. All right. Have a great night. Have a great evening. Thank you. Good night. Everybody. Night all. See you Wednesday.